You're about to see how deep this rabbit hole go. Hello world, it's Siraj, and freelancing keeps getting more and more popular as a career option. I'm going to explain how you can do freelance AI programming in this video. I've done freelancing myself on and off for years. When I was in college and in between jobs, it was an awesome way to make money. As someone who came from a lower middle class background, making 80 to $100 an hour doing programming contracts was a big deal for me and gave me the runway necessary to work on my own personal projects as well as spend time traveling and learning. I now earn revenue from a multitude of sources, YouTube ads, Patreon, book sales, my paid courses at the School of AI, and now that I've built a recognizable brand in the AI community, companies like Intel, Google, and Amazon consistently approach me to do sponsored videos. Still no Microsoft though. Being a freelancer is awesome. You can live anywhere you want to. I just spent an entire year living in Amsterdam before moving back to the States recently. WeWork makes it easy to have an office in pretty much any major city across the world, and you won't have a traditional boss. But it's not all roses. It takes time to build a sustainable income. There's a lot of competition out there. You need to be very disciplined, and it can be a somewhat lonely journey, at least at first, because you're usually working by yourself. With all that said, the freelance workforce is accelerating in its growth, and almost half of all millennials are now freelancing, so now is the time to try it out if you never have before. Your first step in this journey should be to make a game plan. How much time per week do you have available to do freelance work? Make sure to factor in lesser known tasks like time required for finding work, learning about tools, meetings, and setting up your workflow. Are you going to do this part-time or full-time? What kind of projects interest you? Later on, you can change your plan once you get started, but this practice will help you frame your journey. There's a lot to plan, so don't take this step lightly. Make sure to factor achievable weekly, monthly, and yearly goals into your schedule. This will give your journey momentum as you achieve them. According to a recent study by Upwork, AI programming is one of the most in-demand skills for freelancers, so if you find AI interesting, you are very lucky. Also, I love you. Make a list of some of the subtopics in AI that excite you the most. Then, make a list of some of the most in-demand AI skills out there, like chatbot development, computer vision, and TensorFlow, and see what the intersection between the two lists are. Once you've found that, you know the type of skills you need to learn. Learning by doing is the best way to learn anything, and even though paid work is the goal, you can jumpstart your portfolio by contributing to open source projects on GitHub. This is a great way to both improve your skill set and expand your network. MyBridge publishes a monthly top 10 open source projects list on GitHub that highlights some cool machine learning projects you can contribute to. And as you get to know other developers of the project via the Slack or Gitter channels, you'll learn more and expand your network of opportunity. Also, be sure to take advantage of all the incredible free machine learning content that's available on the internet. I have some great curriculums and playlists to help guide you on your journey. Links to those will be in the video description. When you feel your skills are up to par, that's when it's time to start the dance of finding clients. One often overlooked group are your existing contacts. Lots of successful freelancers get their initial work through friends, 
family, and acquaintances. Post on your social media channels that you are available for freelance work and join some social groups on Facebook that act as freelancer marketplaces. You should create a list of platforms that you can browse to look for work. There are the more popular ones like Upwork and Freelancer.com, both of which I have personally used to both find and give work. But there are also other lesser known ones like TopTel. TopTel pre-screens applicants and is very selective, but if you're accepted, expect access to some world-class job openings. Another one is AngelList. Just use the filters data scientist and contract and you'll instantly find startups offering contract work. Founder dating is another. It will connect you with entrepreneurs who need advisees. Filter your search by those looking for a background in data analytics. Guru.com is quickly gaining popularity as a job listing platform and WeWorkRemotely.com has a pretty slick interface which makes it fun to use. Try to find the lesser known smaller job listing platforms on Google as those have less competition which makes it easier for newcomers who don't have as established a reputation in addition to job listings, real life events can act as networking opportunities to find potential clients. Sites like KD Nuggets, O'Reilly Strata, Meetup, and Data Science Central offer networking events all around the world for data science. And you can be sure that people looking for talent will be attending these events. You can connect with them in person there. In my experience, in-person meetings definitely help build trust faster, which is crucial. And you'll definitely want to bring some business cards with you. Link to a great service for that in the video description. Once you have some potential clients, you need to decide how much you're going to charge. Maybe something reasonable, like a million bucks, or maybe it's Maybelline. All right. Jokes aside, for each project, you'll either charge an hourly rate or a fixed fee. If your client wants to use a fixed rate for their project, make sure to fully understand the scope of the project. Otherwise, you'll risk being massively underpaid should the project run long or requirements change. It's best to start off with an hourly rate. There are a lot of factors that go into deciding this rate, like your location, your level of experience, and your skill set that can affect what you charge as an hourly rate. So to help with this complexity, you can use the online rate explorer at codementor.io to decide what you should charge per hour. And when you decide it on an hourly rate, don't ever go lower, only raise it over time. It may be hard at first to find a client, but all it takes is one to validate your rate and the next ones will be easier to get. Earning freelance money is a liberating experience, but you need to be sure that you stay organized financially. With the freedom of freelancing comes the responsibility of managing finances, your own finances, and that means paying taxes yourself. It's best for tax purposes to create a business bank account instead of having it all go through your personal bank account. It makes it easier to track your spending and earning and let you be more thorough about budgeting. Trust me on this one. If you're serious about freelancing, it is worth the effort to create a business bank account. You will thank yourself when it's tax season. A great tool to help with managing financial work is Hello Bonsai. You can manage your proposals, invoicing, payments, time tracking, and more, all from this one platform. It's just a different way of living. Similar to rising up the ranks at a company, the longer you successfully do freelancing, the more credibility you gain for your personal brand. That means the more projects you successfully complete, the better your reviews will be on freelance websites and the more work you can showcase to future clients.
The best way to boost your marketability is to keep on building. Have projects on your GitHub, make sure your LinkedIn profile is up to date, and have a personal website that links everything together. It is absolutely crucial to have your own personal website to showcase your portfolio. Use a simple code-free tool like Weebly if you need to, just make it happen. And keep it technical, don't put honor band or on it or something. Doing these things will make you prepared to begin the job hunt, but ideally your clients come to you, right? One great way to do that is to showcase your technical expertise by developing technical content. That means a blog or a podcast or a YouTube channel, whatever. Consistently make tutorials, opinion pieces, analyses of different topics in machine learning, and you will slowly build a following. The bigger your following, the more people that will recommend you, and all of this will add to your credibility as a brand. I get more than enough requests to do consulting work because of the amount of technical content I've pushed, and so can you. Once you get started with the pirate's life, the Navy is just way too boring. RIP Steve Jobs. At this point, no matter how good the offer is, I would never give up the freedom and flexibility of my lifestyle to work at a corporation. But remember, you will need to master the art of self-discipline to do this well. You set your own hours. You are your own boss. So you also need to make sure to do things for yourself, like give yourself a vacation when you need it and wake up at a good time that you decide. It's hard at first, but if you're consistent, it becomes second nature. Three things to remember from this video. Freelancing is a perfectly viable career choice. It gives you the freedom and flexibility to live the life you want, but you'll need to master the art of self-discipline. You can use web tools to optimize your workflow from Upwork to Hello Bonsai. And to be successful, you'll need to build your online presence by building projects for yourself and for clients. Plus, building an audience through technical content definitely helps. I've got a lot more treasures in here where that came from. Hit subscribe and you'll get them all. For now, I've got to live the pirate's life, so thanks for watching.